Hey everybody, I'm Dr. Joel Parker and this is Whiteboard Wednesday. First off, just got back from the Southwest Veterans Symposium in San Antonio, Texas this year. Thank you so much for all of you that came by our booth there. It was awesome to see you and it's always very humbling and very nice to hear that you're enjoying Whiteboard Wednesdays. We got a lot of compliments, a lot of handshakes and hugs and I love you guys too. Um, please help me to help you in your practice uh, and help more veterinarians by you know referring your friends over. Just get them to subscribe or send an email in but again once again thanks very much um, today this week we're gonna be talking about standard operating procedure is this best practice or robotic medicine because I run into this all the time you hear this on some of the bigger organizations such as the VCA's and Bamfields that are very precisely run on standard operating policies and procedures and the reason for that and this is the system that we actually teach here in VPS is that we want to establish as many habits and routines as possible so we don't have to think so much on the daily things it's not that thinking is bad. I just want you to reserve the thinkingness to when you're working with clients and patients. But the regular routines, let's get those just into habits and routines, much like a football team has habits and routines, and they've got a playbook written on all habits and routines. Basically, your standard operating policies and procedures, when you write those all down and get them into the different areas, that's like your playbook. What's being found is that if a human being has to make a decision fresh each time they take a particle or a client or a patient that comes in. If you've got to make a brand new fresh decision every single step of the way, we walk slow. We go slow. We can't get up to speed. What allows us to get up to speed is developing habits and routines off of standard operating policies and procedures. And if you can get a group running off of that, then your group can do a phenomenal amount of work in a shorter period of time with clients leaving super happy and having experienced this kind of almost magical type of experience when they went into your practice. There were no screw ups. The people were calm and friendly. The receptionist wasn't run ragged trying to handle all sorts of flaps and problems. The technician was friendly when she presented the pet back to the, pay or the client, things like that. So you want friendly staff, run them on standard operating policies and procedures for most things. Here's where it falls apart. When you've got standard uh, best practice operating procedures, those work for 80 to 90 percent of the cases. But just like sailing a ship or, or flying an airplane, you're going to run into some turbulence, you're going to run into some odd cases every now and again where you're going to have to break procedure. So I believe best practice uh, of medicine actually has, if you look down in our action steps, we've got here establish your standard operating medical procedures. I'll just put in here medical procedures. Okay, this would be how catheters are put in, how you set up for x-rays, how you set up for surgery, how you set up for labs, things like that. What's the, where does the file go after the lab test, things like that. Establish those for 80% of your procedures. This is going to leave the remaining 20% for those unusual cases that come in. And it's even being said that every now and again, even standard operating policies and procedures you know, should be broken. For example, if you've got a, uh, an administrative standard operating procedure whereby you, uh, all clients must pay at the, uh, on receipt of service, and let's say your best client comes in and she forgot her checkbook at home. You know, you, you can imagine you've got the new uh, receptionist up front that says, well, our standard policy procedure says we, sh we, ha we can't release the pet without getting paid in full. And you can imagine, here's a client that's giving you literally tens of thousands of dollars. In that case, you get the idea that the senior person would have to come in, they would have to temporarily break policy and procedure, send the great client's pet home, and then the next day the client would come in with their checkbook. So there are times where policies and procedures should be broken but this doesn't mean you throw them out forever and ever. It means you bring them back in the next day. There's just always exceptions, temporary exceptions, albeit for the rule. So here we are. Action steps for this week. Establish your standard operating policies and procedures. We're talking mainly medical ones on this one. Policies can and should change and can be broken if you've got a special case in. But case in point, think of it, if you've got a 16-year-old cat that comes in that's losing weight and has a heart rate of 280, chances are it's hyperthyroid and it should have a thyroid taken. So if you put into your standard operating procedures that every cat over 8 years of age should have a CBC and a chem screen and a UA and a T4 done, that's actually good medicine. Okay, somebody may call that robotic medicine. I call it good medicine. Recently, well, five years ago, there was a case where a new, brand new associate doctor sent a 16 year old cat home with a high heart rate by only taking a urine sample. The cat came back in the next week for the urine results, and the owner of the practice then proceeded to run CBC chem screen and T4 to actually make the diagnosis of hyperthyroidism. Had that practice had some standard operating medical policies and procedures in, that new doc trained on them wouldn't have missed it. So 
I'm a proponent of a good mix of good uh, uh, best practice policies and procedures and then every now and again they can change and they should be broken. Thirdly here, train and correct your staff on standard operating policies and procedures to establish a competent culture. Okay, A culture is a series, is a group that works on habits and routines. There's, not, there's a calmness in it. There's not a lot of frenzied activity from the stakes and screw ups. Okay guys, that's all I got for you this week. Obviously you can tell I'm a proponent of standard operating policies and procedures. I love them. I love to keep the thinking for the brand new cases that come in and let's standardize everything else as much as we can and take away a lot of this decision making process that slows us down and in actual fact detracts from patient health. Okay guys, thanks again. See you next week. Please subscribe down below. Dylan Byrne, thanks very much for your camera work. All right, very welcome. And we'll see you guys next week. Thanks a lot.